what's up everyone welcome back to my channel i am toby and i film videos about life in canada videos related to canada basically so please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed please please don't forget to smash the like button for me it really helps my channel don't forget to leave comments and share this video so in today's video i'm going to be talking about tips for international students in Canada and international students coming to Canada so I have a video on tips for international students on my channel I filmed this sometime last year and now this is another one adding some other um, tips for you guys so watch it I'll link it in my description box if you haven't seen it yet and also big shout out to Liberant for sponsoring today's video I've worked with them in the past and I'll link the video I did with them in the past regarding how to rent in Canada. Check out that video, it will be linked in my description box. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is working here as an international student. There are definitely a lot of benefits to that, financial benefits for your upkeep, for yourself, for your tuition fee. And one thing a lot of people don't know about, which is actually an international student secret, because a lot of people aren't aware of this. They're just aware of the 20 hours of campus, but you don't have a work limit if you're working on campus. Yes, you don't have a work limit if you're working on campus. So you're allowed to work on campus of your school where you study with no restrictions, but you have to know that this has to be on campus. So if we're doing online learning, like what we did last year, and two years ago basically since 2020 you won't be able to qualify for this because you're not working on campus but now a lot of people are going back to in-person learning and from this september 2021 people are going back to in-person learning so if you're back to that and you are actually going to be working on campus then you should be good you should be good since you'll be physically located on campus last year some people at TAs which is teaching assistants they were basically working for Carlton University but they were not on campus because it was um, remote learning virtual learning so they won't qualify for this um, particular type of work hours but now that we're going back to school if their teaching assistant job is on campus which was the usual thing before this whole pandemic then they would be able to qualify for this as an international student but for now IRCC hasn't announced any changes to this rule of no restrictions to the hours that you work if you're working on campus and you meet the requirements but still keep an eye and um, check the status because things might change and you might be watching this video in like 2023 and things might have changed by then but still check the status of that and you can confirm if you qualify for it with your international student office the eligibility criteria for this is that you must be a full-time student you must have a valid social insurance number you must have a valid study permit. One thing to know is that you might be able to work with only a study permit. This actually depends on your visa type and depends on your country. If you are from Nigeria and Ghana, I know that one that you can work with only your study permits. But there are some other countries because I have a friend from um, a country in Africa and she had to actually get this work permit even while studying in order to work so just confirm your visa type and know what whether you need only a study permit for that or you actually need to apply for a work permit i'm just saying this because i know that not all of my subscribers are from nigeria just so you don't assume that oh you don't need work permit to work as a student just confirm about that you can confirm with your international student's office so if you can handle it handle working more than 20 hours on campus remember it has to be on campus in your school within the boundaries of your school remember that but yeah if you can handle it then yeah you can do it i have friends that were able to handle it and there are different jobs you can do on campus and i feel like because you're working on campus it's actually easier some of the examples of jobs that you can do on campus library um you can work in the library this is even easier because you don't really have to be doing things physically so you can actually still be doing your school work during that time you can work in the registrar's office you can work in different departments for example you can work in the engineering department in the science department you can work in residence so you can be the front desk person you can work in the athletic center you can work on private owned businesses and school also for example the school's food court you can also work there you can work in convenience store locations in the school there are a lot of jobs for um 
student on campus so you should look into that and make sure you qualify for it before you start doing it make sure you are actually located on campus next i'm going to talk about is saving yeah if you work you will earn money one thing i always tell international students is to save because you would be grateful that you saved in the future like i'm so grateful that i saved my money and all of that you'll be grateful that you saved in the future there are different things you can save on as a student for example with your textbooks there's some classes that you actually won't require the textbook or maybe you might need it only once or twice confirm with the professor send an email to the professor confirm that you would need the textbook a lot of them are actually um, open they'll tell you oh you actually want to use the textbook but if you want to study more or if you want to understand concepts more and all of that then you can get the textbook if not it's not required you can always rent from library apart from that you can buy used textbooks like just don't buy new textbooks so yes they're expensive you can buy used textbooks there are a lot of places where you can get used textbooks from another way you can save money is sharing accommodation you can save a lot of money this way like maybe get a two bedroom and share it's with you and your friend or someone else some people actually get roommates online some people share rooms with new people some people share it with their friends and one thing to know is that you should live off campus if you compare the cost of living off campus and on campus is actually more affordable for you if you live off campus and that brings me to the sponsor of my video live rents this platform supports international students in securing a place from abroad with their verification processes standard digital tenancy agreements and digital rent payments they have a trusted rental community with 90 percent of their listings verified so you don't have to worry about scams because you'll know which um listings and which landlords are verified with their profile verification badges on their platform and we all know that students living outside of canada are looking to rent in canada or first-time renters in general even people that are already in canada are particularly vulnerable to scams so a platform like this helps to avoid that this this platform has different filter options when searching for accommodation. I like this platform as you'll be able to filter options for rooms and see all shared rooms on LiveRent. As I said, it's better for international students or like students in general to share accommodation so you can split the cost of rent and other utility bills. So as you can see, this will help you narrow down your search if you're looking to save more money on living in a shared accommodation as I mentioned. Another one of my favorite tools on LiveRent is the building page where you can see all available listings within that building and this actually makes it easy for you to compare prices and find the best deals. This is one tool to use especially if you're looking for a condo because they have different prices, they are different owners and different landlords are willing to take and accept different um, rental payments depending on their mortgage so it would be good to actually compare the prices to pick the one with the lowest cost as you can see here a lot of people don't know that you can actually negotiate on rent so i recommend that you do your research and finding out the average cost of living in that area and using that information you can actually negotiate on your rent you can check out the monthly rental data on live rents platform as you can see for the cost of rent in cities like Vancouver, Toronto and Montreal. If you're looking for a place to rent, if you're already in Canada or if you're outside Canada looking to come into Canada, you should definitely check out Live Rent platform. I'll leave it linked in my description box below. I like this platform because it makes renting process easy, it makes it stress-free and it's just nice as a one-stop shop. You can do everything on the platform and they have um, accommodation for immigrants they have the i am a first time renter feature and they also have the i do not live in canada feature which helps immigrants looking for a place to rent thanks to live rent for sponsoring today's video so as i said split the cost get your room made so you can split everything and save money on that the next thing i'm going to be talking about tools that would help you with your school work if you watched that my other video on tips for international students actually um mentioned some resources for you to use but there are tools like raise my professor so it's called raise my prof i'll leave it in my description box you can use that to select the prof that you want so a lot of the classes a lot of courses have different professors some courses might have one professor some can have like five different professors so I actually advise you to go and raise my prof check the professor's name and literally read reviews on the professor from there you can actually learn a lot about the professor like there's some professors that 
before I got into their class, I already knew, okay, this particular professor, he cares about exams a lot, or he cares about you being clear and concise when you're writing essays. Like, you just know things that will actually help you in the course and it will help you um, choose a professor. So, which reveals, obviously, professors are different. There's some professors that you say, okay, they're actually lenient, they're okay, but there are some professors that are it be hard to get an A in their course and obviously you want to get an A so you won't pick that type of professor <laughs> so I always did rate my professor when I was choosing my courses another thing that helped me a lot check helped me a lot um notes bro there's one thing called notes bro and there's course hero also i actually used notes bro it helps you with course work so if you miss a class or you don't have notes for something or you want to even see past questions so you can like practice when you're studying for your exam another thing is um grammarly so as you know you write a lot of essays here and the essays are totally different from the essays that I used to write in Nigeria and my friends too because it was different for them too. So Grammarly would just help you to understand things better, to avoid plagiarism because that's really really serious here, like it's a serious offense here. The next I'm going to talk about is getting your driver's license early. I'm just going to use Ontario as an example because this is where I live so I'm familiar with the driving like driver's license process here because it's different from for other provinces but in Ontario we have G1, G2 and G. When you do your G1 exam it's actually not a practical exam so for that one if you pass your G1 you have to wait one whole year in order to be able to do your G2 or if you go to a driving school you still have to wait at least more than six months I think it's eight months I'm not sure but you still have to wait more than six months so what if you get a car immediately your parents say you want to get you a car or you get a job that actually needs you to be able to drive to have G2 or G to be able to drive things like that can affect you and the first one like with G1 you're literally just writing an exam so the earlier you do it the better my time I think it was 20 questions multiple choice so it's not really that deep so the earlier you do it the better for you and another thing about getting your driver's license early is that it actually saves you money in the long run because your insurance bill will depend on the license you have and how many years you've had it for so if you see someone with a G2 and see someone with a G the insurance bill or the insurance rate is different so the earlier you get it the better because I had friends that even in university they had done their G1, done their G2, gotten their G. Even if you don't have a car, you can still get it without getting a car. You just go to driving school, drive, get your G2, go to driving school again to practice for your G exam. And you can still be renting cars because they have like um, student rentals and school and all of that. And honestly, you would not regret it. You will actually be thankful if you did your G1 exam early and just got your driver's license early in general. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is building credits. I have a, bit, a video talking about credit score. I'll leave it in my description box. But please, as an international student, I know sometimes your parents be like, oh, or your family members will be like, don't open a credit card or you're still a student or don't go and enter basic, basic debts and all of that. But please, be disciplined with it, but please open it. The earlier, the better for you. Your credit, can, your credit score and history can affect your um, mortgage payments when you get a house. Even if you're not getting a house now, you might get a house in 10 years, in 5 years. Your credit score and history will affect that and a lot of things in general. Like this is a credit driven society. So the earlier you do it, the better because you have credit history and it has to like try and make it good credit history, not just credit history and it's nonsense that is there. But paying your bills on time. Please pay your bills on time and if you know you really really cannot cannot deal with the credit card like you're that type of person that you have no self-control at all then please don't get a credit card like just try and find something instead but if you have self-control and you know that you'll be disciplined which you should be then please start building your credit early like as early as when you come like literally start building your credit early that's the end of my video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you um gained a lot from this video please don't forget to smash the like button for me please don't forget to smash the like button for me don't forget to hit the subscribe button don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss my videos so you watch it early don't forget to um leave comments don't forget to share this video and i'll see you guys in my next video i really hope you enjoyed this video bye